Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, as I mentioned that we are going to discuss about the Ricardian equivalence and this particular Ricardian equivalence idea is very important in the area of public finance and also it helps understand the timing of the government that whether the government is, uh, is going to, when the government is going to in, uh, increase the taxes then it is bound to happen that the government will give tax relief in the future. So, individuals are also working out with their consumption behavior and then they try to at least sort out this uh, or smooth out the consumption with given the condition of the government. So, the reference book as I mentioned it remains same the Stephen D. Williamson and Eric Sims and the Sanjay Kachug and the objective I have already mentioned. So, let us start. So, in the same way here you have the government's current period budget constant what is the budget the budget constant that this particular government is having is that government is having two channels to go for creating income this is the expenditure so this is the expenditure so g is the government expenditure which is equivalent to b is the bond issued by the government right it has been sold to the private parties and this t is the tax so one is the tax revenue that the government gets other is the debt scenario where the government can borrow so, borrowing and taxation are these two important scenarios where uh, here you have the, uh, so this particular B T plus T T is the income, total income of the government is equivalent to government expenditure. The government future period budget constraint is G T plus 1 plus 1 plus R T B T is equal to T T plus 1. So, here we have the G T plus 1 plus 1 plus R T B T is equal to T T plus 1. So, this B T that you have it will have the increased value right. So, the government will have to pay some kind of rate of interest. So, this will also bear that. So, the value will in increase in the future period of this bond and in future period the, the corresponding future period value of the government expenditure will be G T plus 1 and here we have the T T plus 1. Now, if you solve for B T here right and substitute it back here you can easily derive the budget constraint of the government. So, solve for B T in equation here right and substitute it in the equation here this, this is what. So, B T is equal to T T plus 1 right. So, here we have T T plus 1 minus G T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T once we substitute in the current period. So, since I got the B T I can substitute it here I get this expression which is equivalent to G T plus G T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T is equal to T T plus T T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T. So, this is the lifetime budget constraint of the government. So, once I mentioned about so here is the expenditure. So, lifetime expenditure of the government is equal to lifetime income of the government which is coming from the tax sources right. So, in the two period setup similar to the representative consumer that we did. So, in case of representative consumer what we had done is equal to we had gone for C T plus S T is equal to Y T right and then we had introduced here S T in the future period given this C T plus 1 and here we had Y T plus 1. In the case of government it also comes out to be the same. So, here we have G T the only thing is that the government will have to uh, a government goes for borrowing in the current period and the amount that it will have it will be bigger in future. So, this is how it looks like. So, here we have G T plus G T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T T T plus T T. So, this is the lifetime budget constraint similar to the representative consumer that we have got. Now, the, the credit market equilibrium condition. So, here you have uh, so, in most of the cases if you think about your private savings, so what it consists of. So, if I am talking about the private savings, so this is how the, the, the government is going to calculate. 
So if I'm saying about the private savings, so private saving is nothing but you have income minus consumption minus taxes. So government is charging some amount of taxes, which is the the saving is nothing but the disposable I would say income minus consumption of the individual that you have. Now this tax is going to the government. So here here we have the GT is equal to BT plus TT or BT is equal to GT minus TT, right? So here we have a Y. So here if I'm I am saying here if I go for if I write this equation GT is equal to BT plus TT, so I can also write a BT is equal to GT minus TT, right? Now here I have a Y, let's work out with this equality condition. So here we have the SPT is equal to BT, I am getting BT here is equal to GT minus TT, so I am just putting it here. Here you have Y minus C minus T, so I am putting it here. So which means that it can be written as Y minus C minus T is equal to GT minus TT. Now if I just go for solution of this, then how it looks like? We can we can write it as Y is equal to C plus G, right? This is the closed economy setup, competitive equilibrium that we have. We can easily get this because if I am bringing this side, then this gets cancelled. So what we get is nothing but the closed economic equilibrium. So we easily clear the economy with the given set of the, so in the economy you have what? You have the bond issued by government and this bond is held by the by the individuals which is coming from saving and this saving is nothing but Y minus C minus T and this bond is nothing but whatever the, the extra amount that government needs over the tax revenue. So whatever government expenditure that government is making minus the TT that whatever amount that government is using for expenditure. So GT minus TT is this. So here we have a Y minus C minus T is equal to G minus GT minus TT. So obtain our result. So here we have a Y is equal to C plus G. So this is what we try to get it here. Now. Let's work out with the Ricardian equivalence. So, what is the purpose here? The purpose here, whatever we have done, let's uh, first summarize this part. So, the purpose here is that we are trying to derive the lifetime budget constraint of the government. So, we have derived this particular part, right? Once I have derived the lifetime budget constraint of the government, then this, this is how it looks like. Now we want to work out that if the government is going to introduce the bond, then what is the need of introducing the bond? That's the credit market equilibrium condition. That given the equilibrium condition, closed economy equilibrium condition, we have Y is equal to C plus G. Given the level of tax revenue that individual uh, the government gets, whatever the government has the provision of making expenditure, if the government does not uh, collect enough money from the uh, taxes, then the residual amount of government expenditure has to be financed by bond. So this we try to find out here and finally we find out here and then we mention it here it in this form. So Y is equal to C plus G. So this idea we uh, try to emphasize here. You can write Y is equal to C plus G. This is the closed economy uh, setup. I am writing here SPT is equal to BT. So here we have SPT is equal to Y minus C minus T. Here we have the GT is equal to BT plus TT or BT is equal to GT minus TT. So here we have a Y minus C minus T is equal to GT minus TT. If you substitute, uh, if you just go for cancellation, then if you bring this side, so this become positive and this gets cancelled. So here we have finally Y is equal to C plus G. So finally we are arriving at. So which means that if the government places the bonds issued to the private individual then we are easily arriving at the the competitive equilibrium so this, this is what we uh, we are uh, all, uh, we can easily arrive at the closed economy equilibrium or competitive equilibrium now here we have the consumers lifetime tax burden which is equivalent to the consumer share of the present value of government expenditure the timing of taxation does not matter for the consumer. So here we have a TT, TT plus TT plus 1 upon 1 plus RT is equal to amount TT, the tax from the individuals. And this individual tax is coming from where? It is coming from individuals. But government 
collects the taxes and then government simply uh, uses that for expenditure. Now, government when it collects taxes, it uses it for expenditure in what way? It uses it for expenditure on individual. So, if I am having n individuals in the in the economy, if government collects 100, then it is going to divide across all n individuals. So, this is how it means. So, T T plus T T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T is equal to 1 upon n G T plus G T plus 1 upon 1 plus R T. Now, if I substitute this back in the consumer's budget constraint, so this is what we have, right. So, there if I am going for uh, formulation with the taxation, so this is the consumer's budget constraint which is looking like this, right, with the tax imposition. So, I am saying that we can also write the budget constraint as y t minus t t and y t plus 1 minus t t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t. So, here we are writing c t plus c t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t is equal to y t uh, plus y t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t minus t t plus t t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t and if I just substitute this particular expression here for this. So, this becomes c t plus c t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t is equal to y t plus y t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t minus since the individuals are so, so government is sharing the income with individuals right whatever tax it collects in the form of government expenditure whether it is a subsidy or whether it is uh, some kind of of uh, public goods uh, creation or uh, some kind of incentives tax in incentives given so this is included here so which means that if I am just considering at a, a, so this also becomes the the y is equal to c plus g scenario because if the government is simply whatever it is collecting from the individuals, if it is transferring the same to the uh, individual, then in that case it becomes a quite a smooth kind of function and you can easily get the closed economy equilibrium. So here it will be it again represents c it represents y, it represents g. So, which means that y is equal to c plus g you can easily uh, uh, get right. So, this can go this side and becomes the. So, one way of getting closed economy equilibrium is this that whatever bond the government has issued out of g t minus t t. So, this is the private saving. Here we have the the c t plus c t plus 1 upon 1 plus r t. So, in the, in the intertemporal framework this is how the uh, closed economy equilibrium can be arrived. Now, let us have the comparative statics. Now, here it is easier to understand one is that what happens when the government is going to cut the current taxes for a borrower. The this is the budget constraint of the a representative consumer. The consumer is at equilibrium at point A, right. So, he is at point A. Now, you can think about that the endowment point of this representative consumer is at E1, right. Now, we are introducing the cut in current taxes. So, if the government is going to cut the current tax, which means that this particular individual will have a less of future consumption, more of current consumption, right. So, it means that this is having a the increased income, but still you can see that the consumers, the consumption pattern is not going to be impacted. So, here with these two points, if it had it been here, then it may impact, but since all these points are above this, then this representative consumer is not going to, uh, to have any kind of a bad experience with the, the consumption because the income adjustment that we are seeing because of the tax increase, uh, the, the tax cut, this individual income, increase income may be compensated by decreasing. So, this amount whatever cut that you have, it may be saved for the future increase in taxes. So, if the government is going to give a tax cut in the current period, it may happen that it may increase the tax in the future period. So, this dividend that government is going to get in the form of tax cut, it will be saved and this will be transferred to future period because the equilibrium condition remains same, it does not change at all. Now, since we have derived the credit market equilibrium in two ways, uh, this the credit market equilibrium with the help of bond. So, we can superimpose the condition here. 
that Ricardo equivalence with credit market equilibrium, it says that if the individuals, if the government is going to suppose borrow money from the, from the, uh, by issuing the bond and it sells to the commoners the, uh, for the private saving, it becomes part of the private saving, the bond issued, then you can see that the government borrowing also increases, right. So, here you have the borrowing increase, you can see that the private saving also increases. So, here the budget line, uh, here the, the upward line of the saving which is the same increasing with the, uh, the bond holding, it is it also increases, but the increase in private saving, it is not as high as we see increase in borrowing. So, maybe the government has borrowed a, a some amount of money from individuals, but individuals are also rational. They, they know that if the government is going to cut down or giving some incentive by issuing bond or some, so if government has issued the bonds, for example, tax relief government wants to give. For giving the tax relief, for example, suppose we have the situation of COVID-19 and we have, seen, we have seen that government has gone for giving a special expenditure incentive to the individuals at every business level and each and every business activities has uh, some incentive. If that incentive is going to play a very important role, then here you can see that the budget, so the borrowing of the government has gone up, the increase in the borrowing of the government is not directly translating into increase in the private saving. Individuals are also having a limited impact here. So, which means that some amount of, of income, it is going for either consumption or others, but the amount of borrowing it has been translated into this. So, this amount will be used in future to smooth out the consumption pattern. So, what is the learning here? Learning here is that as long as individuals are also saving with the incentive attached from the government, then this will not impact the current consumption. Uh, this will not impact the consumption behavior of the representative agent. Representative agent will be able to smooth out the consumption in the future period also if he sees some kind of tax relief in the current period. If you see some kind of rise in the current uh, period expenditure, uh, uh, current period taxes, then whatever compromise that he is going to make, he will easily compensate that in future. So, those kind of uh, consumption smoothing patterns are important to note. The rate of interest here we are keeping at the same, not much change, but these are the conditions under which the Ricardian equivalence and the credit market equilibrium works. Now, so far we have seen that there has not been any problem with the model and we have been able to derive the Ricardian equivalence, but this Ricardian equivalence idea may be linked with some kind of situations where this may not be easier to, to uh, make this particular theorem valid in, in certain scenarios. So, for those scenarios we will be walking out with some Ex, uh, with some cases. For example, redistributional effect of taxes. Tax changes affect the wealth of different consumers differently. So, rich and poor if I am saying, if the government is going to increase the uniform tax, so if it is going by increasing the tax by the same amount and if the government does not care about the income strata of the individuals, then the poor will have more compromise on their consumption and they will not be able to smooth out. The rich will be easily smoothing out. So, in George Bush administration in case of US, he had given with certain schemes of the government incentives for the rich. So, as a result, the, the tax relief that were given to the rich uh, in terms of uh, investing in certain activities that created a bubble, but at the same time it also created a situation in which the the lower income strata did not have that much chance and ultimately we saw that the middle income class had faced difficulties and we had a full fledged crisis in 2007-8. Second thing is that the debt which the government is, has issued. So, suppose the government has issued for the to tackle the COVID-19, government has borrowed money from the market. Now, the money is spent on this current generation which is having the vaccination, which is having tax incentives, which is having businesses, having some business incentive, tax relief. So, 
whatever cost the government has borne to meet these requirements, whether it is borrowed from the World Bank, whether it is borrowed from some other agencies, whatever borrowing has been done, whatever adjustment we have seen with regard to the fiscal deficit, that borrowing should be, uh, the cost of borrowing should be borne by the current generation who has enjoyed the, the vaccination and all the tax incentive. It should not pass on to the future generation. Otherwise, what happens that if the current generation does not pay the current debt issued by the government, then this particular debt generation will have a spillover effect on the younger generation. So, younger generation who is still in the college studying in some, some university, once they come back to the job, they may face at that time increase in taxes because government has given tax relief now. The new job market entrants will have by extra burden. So, intergeneration transfers whenever we have, we see that Ricard and equivalence fails because those individuals will be paying the price of the, the older generation who had incurred extra, uh, uh, extra borrowing to deal with certain situations. So, those examples are important. So, uh, with regard to debt also, you with regard to borrowing also, you have certain restrictions on the individuals. When taxes are not lump sum, lump sum in the sense that a, a fixed amount of income is deducted from your total income, if it is in percentage term that you have a certain investment, you have certain interest earning, the government is going to charge from that, then that will have the impact because if banks are not offering very high interest rate, the interest rate offered by the bank on the deposits, it may for the rich it may not be that great, but for the poor it may be a good. So, for poor, that money matters a lot. So, if you have a, a tax imposed on the interest income of the individual, then the lower income strata may not have uh, that easy to, to smooth out the consumption. So, in that case also it matters. Then you have the credit market imperfections. The more you have the credit market in imperfection, the market asymmetry, more defaults, banks are increasing the rate of interest and the borrowing rates are costlier. The difference between deposit and borrowings are much larger Then, in that case again this, this equilibrium or this extra burden will create uh, some kind of uh, inefficiency to the borrower and lender and this may again have impact on different income strata and that will create again the tax paying abilities and that, that difference in tax paying abilities will further have impact on the smoothening of the consumption. So, your rate of interest, your current and future paid consumption will have some kind of the unbalanced adjustment and that may further create adverse scenario for fulfilling the Ricard and equivalence theorem. So, that it is uh, we mentioned about and it matters a lot for the policy purposes. So, we will be seeing with some examples that how we can understand the redistributional effect of taxes how we can understand that whether the when we do not have the credit market imperfections can we understand this. So, regarding equivalence has a lot of applications in real life and it is more intuitional also because we often see in our real life that how we bear the burden of taxes. So, intergeneration redistribution if I am mentioning about then here it mentions about what happens when we have overlapping across generations so which means that uh, one generation is going to retire, then you have another generation ready. So, there is a some overlap between these two. So, suppose you have a, uh, you have three period scenario. So, individual one born in period one dies in period two, right. Then, then in period two individual bonds. So, you have the some kind of overlap because the period in which the first generation is dying, you have the next generation coming up and this next generation will die again in period 3. Beyond that we do not see. So, the overlapping period since you have the, uh, the individuals uh, going and coming in one particular period, in that period there will be some kind of extra care and love from the older and the younger generation. So, in that scenario also intergenerational transfers helps a lot. So, if you have the individuals in the first generation uh, born and die in the period 2, if they transfer some amount of wealth to the younger generation, right, either fixed asset or any kind of financial wealth, then that 
if it is interest bearing then that wealth will create extra cushion for the individual to pass on the tax burden from the government so here we have the example suppose a representative agent has following preferences in periods t and t plus 1 so here you have mu ct ct plus 1 and here we have log ct ct plus 1 where ct ct plus 1 are consumption in periods 1 and 2 respectively similarly incomes we have in periods 1 and 2 represented by yt yt plus 1 now the tax burden of the representative agents in period 1 and 2 are t t t plus 1 we assume the uniform uh, rate of interest which is r now can we derive the lifetime budget of the the representative agents can we also solve the consumption in both periods how it looks like now suppose that you have the government expenditure that follows the following conditions that you have gt which is less than yt and gt plus 1 less than yt plus 1 uh, can we derive the budget constraint of the government can we derive the market clearance condition and the interest rate so if we are going to see this then can we also find some kind of insights uh, of using the two period consumption model and we also introducing the government so will that be be possible so if you just uh, get or if you just refer the consumption then here it is easier that you get the uh, the so the buyer constant of the representative consumer will be the same like two period we have done earlier so it will be ct ct plus 1 upon 1 plus rt yt minus tt plus yt plus 1 upon uh, yt plus 1 minus tt plus 1 upon 1 plus rt and then we can solve for the period of as an consumption in both periods yt plus 1 tt tt plus 1 and r and this we will continue the next period so just to summarize that what we have done so far we have done uh, with regard to two things one thing is that we have done that how government uh, is going to finance the expenditure if the expenditure financing through bond goes to the private agents as a saving then saving brings in equilibrium into the economy in the closed economy setup then we have the budget constraint and the budget constraint we found that the tax relief is not going to impact the consumption right in the in the credit market equilibrium also we saw that the bond borrowings of the government it also has the positive effect on so you have the rightward shift rightward shift of borrowing leads to rightward shift so these two conditions are having lot of role to play so regarding equivalence i hope with this exposition it has helped you understand the concept in a much better way we'll have one example that i mentioned and then we'll try to see that how we can see the scenario in which the recurrent equivalence holds and in which all scenario recurrent equivalence fails so i'm stopping it here and we'll continue in the next session from here and thank you thank you so much for your attention and i hope you are having a, a some kind of new feel about the macroeconomics apart from the conventional textbook that we read and we have uh, a very rough idea uh, about uh, certain aspects so the micro foundations i hope it is helping you to clear the clutter and uh, and you can see how in real life scenarios when you we impose certain condition it helps to understand the macroeconomic concept in a much better way thank you thank you thank you once again